Hi, buddy. <laughs> my dogs want to say hi really quick. Hello. How are you? <gasps> I can't. Oh my goodness. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the 16th day of the 25 days of Kitmas. I was going to do a different topic for today's video, except for then I realized that I didn't actually cover every single thing inside of my kit, even though I was pretty sure that I did. Did not. I completely forgot to talk about the false lashes that I keep in my kit, along with all of the eye primers that I keep in my kit. <laughs> I should have probably included the eye primers when I did my eyeshadows, but that day has passed and now we're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over those. And then as a bonus, I'm going to go ahead and include a tutorial on one of my little mannequin heads that I have because I don't have a real person available right now. I'm going to be showing you guys how I apply the false lashes and also how I do winged eyeliner on people. So yeah, let's get started with the video here. The first things I wanna cover are the eyeshadow primers. I have a combination of eyeshadow primers inside of my kit and one of them I am experimenting with right now. Although I think I'm gonna go back to like the original eyeshadow primers that I had in my Kit. So I have been using the Juvia's Place Eye Prep Eye Prime Eye Bases for probably about maybe like four months or so now. I was trying to replace the P. Louise bases that I used to have inside of my kit, but to be totally honest, I might just go on a P. Louise's website and bite the bullet. It's not necessarily the cost that gets me with P. Louise, it's just that it's not easily accessible because I don't live in the UK. And Morphe stopped selling them, so now I don't know what US sites sell P. Louise, but I did try these Juvia's Place ones because they're supposed to be dupes for for the P. Louise bases. And I have tried these, but I don't think they perform as well. I have shade one, which is the lightest one. And this is like more of an ivory kind of color. Looks like that. And then I'm also going to swatch shade three, which is the other one that I have. And this is a darker, warmer cocoa kind of color I would describe it as. I don't know, I'm terrible at describing colors. Then this is the shade three right here. And that is the darkest shade that they carry. They also do carry shade two, which is right in the middle. And that one I don't like as well because it's super yellow. It's just really weird because one of these can't really be used alone necessarily because either they're too light, too dark, too yellow colored or too red colored. It's like very weird how they did the tones of these. And since there's only three of them, I almost had to keep mixing all of them together to be able to get the right tones for people. So I do like the P. Louise bases a lot better just for their color ranges. And then also the fact that they just wear a lot better too. Then the other ones that I decided to try are from Beauty Bay. The colors at least are a little bit better. And I prefer to use cream bases for eyes that are actually like tinted eyeshadow primers just because they cover all the discoloration in the eyelid. They make really smooth bases and they make your colors pop a little bit more rather than using clear bases. I don't know if I like them yet or not. <laughs> I'm kind of still experimenting around with them. I haven't really come to a conclusion quite yet, although these are more similar to the P. Louise bases. The only gripe I have with them is that they come in these little doe foot applicators, which makes them less convenient to use as a makeup artist. As an everyday consumer, this would be really easy because you could just like apply it directly to your eye. But with makeup artists, we have to depot everything. So everything has to be put onto a palette and worked off of there. Otherwise, you can also go in with a disposable lip gloss applicator of some sort and then apply it that way. It's just not the most convenient thing. However, I do like the formula a lot better on these than the Juvia's Place bases. I have the shades three, four, and five because I kind of wanted to work around the Juvia's Place bases that I have. That one is shade three, that one is shade four, and then that one is shade five. They're more neutral eyeshadow bases, so they're not super warm and they're not super cool. They're just kind of right in between, and that's how the P. Louise color ranges are too. So I find these to be very similar to it. I guess you could remove this applicator and just like squeeze this whole thing out, but then I think you'd get like a lot of color that way. I could probably try it that way though. The other eyeshadow base that I use is the MAC Paint Pots. I have mine all depotted into this little view set palette right here. It's so tiny, like look at it compared to my hand. I'll have to look this up. All the view sets have names to them, and I'm not sure which one this is called. And then if you open it, um, then that is what the bases look like in here. I have four different colors, as you guys can see. This is what the paint pots originally look like. I bet everybody has seen these before. This one is soft ochre. This one is the painterly paint pot. This one in the middle is the shade groundwork. And then the one on the bottom is it's fabstract. I actually really like using that as a brown base for smoky eyes. Also, if you use a dark brown like this on the bottom liner and then smudge it out with an eyeshadow, it sticks a lot better too. I do like having MAC paint pots just for people who have like oily eyelids. Obviously having like emollient eye bases like this is not for everybody, especially if they do have really, really oily eyelids. So I'll go ahead and use a matte base. In that case, I will use the MAC paint pot 
hot so you got to have stuff that compensates for all different skin types and moving on to the actual eyelashes that i use i have all my eyelashes depotted and cut up inside of this view set taxi palette and it has five different sections inside of there i keep different styles of lashes in each one although i think i might only have like three different types of lashes right now i always use the ardell lashes like ardell lashes are my absolute favorite and you can get a pro discount on ardell's website if you go on there and apply for it just to let you know although sometimes i'm like really lazy and then i'll just go to ulta and pick them up because i think about things last minute i love the ardell naked lashes that is my favorite within the Ardell lashes that I love. And I have two different styles that I use for these. So I have the Ardell 420 lashes, which look like this. They're just very fluffy and wispy, and I love how light the band is. They feel very comfortable on the lash line. Anybody who is a first lash time wear doesn't get like super uncomfortable and it doesn't feel super heavy. These ones kind of mimic lash extensions. And then the nice thing about these is that all of these, since the bands are so thin, you can double stack them. I am wearing the 420s right now, but as you can tell from the side, I double stacked mine and then they're very short, but then very voluminous. I don't like lashes on myself personally, since I have more of a hooded eyelid that reach all the way up to my eyebrow. And the majority of the time when you have thicker lashes, they just tend to be really long as well. So I like the fact that you can stack these and then customize them. I just love how they look though. And yeah, they're very good for hooded eyes too, by the way. And then the other style of the Ardell Naked Lashes that I carry are the Ardell 421s. These are a little bit longer, as you guys can tell. You can still double stack these if you want to. The only thing that you guys really need to watch out for with the Ardell Lashes is that each box is super inconsistent. If you know, you know. Like sometimes you'll go to the store and find like really fluffy, like wispy lashes. And then sometimes there'll be ones that look super fake. So yeah, make sure you look at the consistency of all the lashes that you're picking up because they're very inconsistent for some reason. Then the other lashes that I carry inside of my kit, but I might be phasing out because I don't hardly get use out of them anymore. They're still Ardell lashes. They're just not part of the naked line. These are the Ardell Dummy Wispies. I feel like this is a cult favorite among a lot of different makeup artists, except for I now feel like these look super fake compared to the Ardell Naked Lashes, and I don't like using them as much anymore. Those are all the three styles of lashes that I have currently. Again, I don't carry any thicker lashes than that because I can always double stack them, and that's what you guys need to keep in mind is that it's really important to know how to customize lashes so you don't have to carry like all the styles in the world. You can just double stack them or like layer on individuals or something. I don't do individual lashes currently. I know how to do them. I just don't like how much time they take, and I usually don't have that much time with my brides, but with the Ardell Naked Lashes, you can definitely replicate lash extensions like you almost have individuals while still doing strips so it gets done a lot quicker. Okay, so now it is time to move on to the demonstration of this whole entire thing. Isn't this kind of terrifying? Like, I don't know what terrifies me about mannequins. This is actually my mannequin head that I got from my hairstyling course that I took with the Online Makeup Academy. No, I have not finished that course yet. I just stopped that course because I got so busy with bridal season that I kind of got overwhelmed and I just don't have a lot of extra time. So I'm sorry you won't get to see it on like a real person that obviously has like twitches and can blink and whatnot. <laughs> but at least you guys can see like the technique that I have and I'll be able to show it a little bit more up close for you guys. Okay, so this is my mannequin. I do not have a name for it like normal artists or hairstylists. Comment below what you think I should call her because I need a name. Even though she is a mannequin, I'm still gonna maintain the same hygienic procedures. So I'm taking this little Artist Kit Company palette. It's just a clear acrylic one. Then I'm going to be using my Inglot AMC gel liner. This is in the shade 77. Seriously, the best gel eyeliner that I've ever found. I like using gel liners because it gives me a little bit more control. And if you guys didn't see my sanitation video, using liquid liners or using felt tip liners is a no-no because you cannot get those 100% clean. Then if you guys didn't see my last video over my brushes, this is my favorite freaking angle liner brush ever. It's the Ike Show Beauty brush. I get these off of Amazon. They're so affordable. I think they're maybe only like $11 piece or something. It's called the Angled Liner Brush, the E835. And as you can tell, this thing is so, so thin, but it's still also flexible too. And that's the secret that you really want for a good liner brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out a little bit of the Inglot liner with my spatula right here. Then I'm just going to put it right in this first divot like that. Then I'm going to take my liner brush and what I like to do is I like to dip in, but then I will sit there and like almost swish it back and forth, if that makes sense, just so it is all evenly coated on the tip. If you guys have ever tried to put winged eyeliner on a client and it's just not placed correctly, it's probably 
most likely because you tried drawing the wing with their eyes closed. If you draw their wing with their eyes closed, you can't really tell where the actual wing is supposed to be placed and where it's supposed to sit, especially if people have hooded eyes. Um, so I usually have my clients open their eyes all the way just so I can map out where the wing is supposed to sit. Then at that point in time, I'll have them close their eyes and then finish the completion of the wing. That's pretty much the angle that I want to draw the wings at. So I'm going to draw a line right on the side. like that. And that is the map out for my wing. And then all I'm going to do is start drawing the little triangle that connects it. So then I'm going to take my liner brush and go this way. So then you kind of have a point for your triangle there. Then all I'm going to do is fill in that complete triangle. And again, this is not like the cleanest line right now. Okay, so now that you have that triangle filled in, then I wanna make it a little bit sharper on the ends. And then all I'm gonna do is flick it out. And then you can pull it a little bit more if you want to. Depends how crisp of a wing that you want to get, but that is pretty much what my wing is looking like. Of course, you don't have to make it that thick if you don't want to, but this mannequin's eye shape allows for it, so I'm just gonna do that. And then I'm gonna flip the brush the other way around, and then we're just gonna start going along the lash line. And then I'm flipping it again like this so I can get the inner corner. And a lot of the times, some people will have a little bit more of a droop right here on the inner corner. And if that's the case, sometimes you wanna pull up on the lid of somebody's eye just so it's a little bit more taut. And then you kind of can get like right in there. I like how I'm still like holding it up like I'm actually doing this on somebody. <laughs> But if I zoom out though, that is what the liner looks like. And then I'm gonna move to the other side. I'm just gonna get more of my liner on the brush. Now it's all about symmetry. So you wanna see where this one starts and where this one is, and then almost kind of match up. So as you guys can tell, I pretty much have like a good symmetry going on the two of them. So then same technique with this one. And you might have to position yourself depending on um, the different angles and everything, but I'm just gonna follow through on this one. And then I'm just going back and forth just to check my symmetry, but I think we're doing pretty good. As good as we can do on a mannequin, you know? Okay, and then once you have a pretty good symmetry going on, then I'm gonna go ahead and connect the lines all the way. And just make it a little bit more even. And then as you guys can tell, that is what we have going on as far as the wing liner. So it is very symmetrical, or at least I think it is right now. <laughs> and then now we're gonna put on false lashes. So with the false lashes, um, it's very important to know that you do need to have an eyeliner of some sort to be able to have the lashes adhere well to the actual lash line. And I don't know how well that these lashes are going to stick to plastic, so we're gonna see if this works. I'm gonna be using the Ardell 421 lashes, the bigger ones, just so you guys can see it. And then I'm going to be using my Kiss Lash Glue. This is just the strip lash adhesive, I love it. It's with aloe, so very hydrating. 
And then I'm just gonna be removing them off of the backing here. And you wanna be very careful doing this just so you don't like rip the lashes. After you have them off of the backing, I like wiggling them like this back and forth just so it kind of retains its shape a little bit. Now with these, you always want to measure from the inner corner and never the outer corner, because if you start cutting from the inner corner, then you don't have a nice gradient going on. So what I'm gonna do is, since the eyes are not closed, this is gonna be a little bit harder, but you wanna start on the inner corner where the lash line actually is. So where it starts right here, and then you wanna put it actually on the lashes. As you can tell right here, there's a little bit of overhang going on. Luckily, these have notches inside of them, so I usually count the notches. So with this one, I probably could remove like two notches. So you take them back off. Then I'm just taking my cuticle scissors, and these are what I use to cut lashes. And then I'm just cutting two notches on the outer corner. Like that. Then I'm just gonna go in with the lash glue and start applying it, and you do not need that much on the lash band at all. Just like a very thin layer of glue. And usually I would use a disposable applicator since it's physically touched somebody's eye. But I'm gonna be reusing this on myself. <laughs> so as of now, I do not care. And this is my own lash glue too, it's not my client's glue. So you have that for your lashes. So very thin layer of glue. And then now I'm probably going to wait maybe about like a minute or so. I like the white glue because you can tell when it starts to dry. Whenever you have black glue, I can never tell if it's dry or not, but whenever it's white, then it starts to dry clear. Once about half of it dries clear, then that's when you wanna stick it on. That's like the prime time. You wanna make sure you give it enough time to get tacky. Also in this minute time frame that you're waiting for your lashes to get tacky is also when you can go in and foundation match your client if you do eyes first like I do. Otherwise you can be doing like other things just so you're not wasting time or shaking the lashes or something waiting for them to dry because you're just wasting like seconds at that point in time and seconds add up into minutes. So just make sure you're utilizing your time correctly. Okay, as you can tell, it's a little bit more dry now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on now. I'm using this lash applicator. This is from Tarte. And I like doing this just because it lets me get in a little bit more precisely on somebody's eye like this, as opposed to just um, trying to use my fingers and work around things. Now, what I tell my clients whenever I put these on is to look down just to not close their eyes all the way, because if they close their eyes all the way, it has a tendency to stick to their bottom lashes, or you can also glue their eyes shut too. This is going to be a little bit trickier because my mannequin's eyes are all the way open, so just bear with me. <laughs> but what I normally do is I have them look down and then I'll stick the lashes right in the center of the lid. Although this is gonna look really weird now because the mannequin's eyes aren't closed. Then what I do is I'll take the tip and then adhere it on the side. And then I'll also take it on the inner corner as well. And then at this point in time, you can make like any adjustments that you want. So then that is one lash over there. It's actually a lot harder <laughs> with somebody's eyes open. <laughs> So yeah, that is what we are looking like as far as the eyelashes. You can tell they're very symmetrical um, in placement and everything. Um, you can always, of course, adjust it. I just had a hard time just because this is not a real person and they're not sticking very well. But if it was somebody's like real skin, it would stick a lot better than this. I'm just having issues with glue going on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you would place lashes. At this point in time, you would wanna ask your clients if they feel comfortable, if they feel like anything's poking them, particularly in the inner corner sometimes. Like sometimes if you don't cut the inner corners right or you don't place them right, then they sometimes can poke the client's inner corners and that becomes very annoying after a while and it's like very obvious. And if they do say that they are poking them, you can also do a trick where I just like push up with my thumb so you can have them look down again and just kind of push up like this. 
and it'll kind of relieve some of the pressure on the inner corner. Otherwise, if they still feel like it's poking, you can remove it completely, um, cut off again from the outside, and then place it a little bit farther out rather than in so much. So those are also the solutions that you can do for that. And yeah, that is about it for this video. So I hope you guys did learn a lot. I'm so sorry again that I had to do it on a mannequin instead of a real person. So hopefully you guys did learn a lot in techniques and also learn about like, of course, the eyeshadow primers and everything too. If you guys did enjoy, definitely go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up as well as also hitting that subscribe button down below and also turn on your post notifications because I will be uploading a video each and every day up until Christmas so you don't want to miss those and as always I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video all right bye